Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond. Welcome back to the YouTube video. Still looking at some Try Hack Me. Off the tales of Looking Glass, I want to showcase Wonderland, which was the original, uh, I guess, series of Alice in Wonderland uh, based and themed rooms. Uh, we have the IP address here and just another challenge room. So all it needs is user.txt and root.txt. We don't really have any guidance. Um, I do, of course, have the flags already in here because I have reviewed this previously. So please forgive me for that. But I'll showcase how to get each of those little tidbits and we'll dive in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make an nmap directory and I will nmap the box to start us off as I always do. Let me go ahead and run with TAC SC for default script, TAC SV for enumerating versions, and ON to save it as an nmap format. And I'll save it in that nmap directory that I just created with the initial file name. And I'll let that go. As I normally do, I do like to just go ahead and poke to see if there is a web interface here or just is it running a web server maybe on port 80. In this case, it is. It says follow the white rabbit. Curious to and curious to cry Alice. She was so much surprised for the moment she forgot how to speak. Good English. Okay. Um, looking at the source code, I'm going to check with control U on my keyboard. I see a main.css. I do like to check these static files just in case they hide anything in there. If there's anything kind of custom. Image, I guess we could download this and if we needed to run some steganography or do some other file tricks on that. But let's actually start to enumerate that web service. I'll fire off Nikto and I'll also... Slap that into uh, nikto.log. And let's do the same for GoBuster. We'll do a GoBuster tag U with the IP address. I'll specify the word list as my opt directory list medium, which typically comes with uh, durbuster. Uh, don't forget I need to specify that dir argument there to start off durbuster. I'll let that run. And looks like our nmap scan has finished. So I'll look at it. It looks like we have port 22 open for SSH. Simple as usual and uh, regular standard Ubuntu Linux that we're working in. And of course, just our port 80 web server. It's a Golang net server, HTTP, which is kind of interesting. You don't often see that, but it says follow the white rabbit. Peculiar. Um, checking out our GoBuster results, I see an interesting entry already for slash R. Uh, I'll take a look at what that is. I'll go to slash R and it says, keep going. Would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? If you wanted to, you could slap this right back into GoBuster and it would find something new in that slash R directory. But I kind of picked up on the theme and that if we're following the white rabbit and our first letter is R, maybe we'll find an A. Yep, yep. And a B. And you can see in the URL, we're slowly spelling out the word rabbit. So we'll slap that in, slap those in, and there we go. Open the door and enter Wonderland. Now we have a little bit more. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat, if you only walk long enough. Alice felt she could not be denied, so she tried another set. Question, what sort of people live here? Had her in that direction. There's a March hair. Yeah, I thought this was weird. Okay, is there going to be anything more in here? Is it going to be an H to get to Hatter, or is there going to be something else for other things or I thought okay let's go ahead and take a look at this new image is there steganography in this none of those seem to particularly work for me as I was staring at the source code I noticed and it actually slipped right under my eye the very first time because all this text kind of threw me off there is a little paragraph tag that is purposefully hidden there's a css style here to do not display this and it's simply seemingly credentials so Alice maybe is a user. That colon kind of indicates here, okay, this is a username and a password. So let's try to simply SSH in with that. I will go ahead and just slap that in so I have it available to me. And then I'll go grab this IP address because I constantly forget that. And it will ask me for the password. And I'll say yes to accept the key and enter the password. There we go. Now I am logged in as Alice. Peculiar. Okay. There's a root.txt in this directory, which is kind of funky. Uh, I, I guess we can't read it. It's owned by root. So kind of a jerk move, I guess. There's a root.txt in a regular user directory. So maybe we'll see a user.txt in the root directory. 
Uh, peculiar enough, though, there is a walrus and the carpenter.py file, just a little Python script. Sorry, I guess my face is in the way. You couldn't really see that well. Let's take a look at what that is. Whoa. What is this? I can see some code here. For i in range of 10, it'll choose a random line from the poem. Choose a line was line. And this is a giant long poem that's just stored as a string variable. And they're using it with that random module in Python. Okay. So... I wonder if this is actually executed. I wonder if this is ran from anything. Um, let's upload opt linpies just to run it. And did that go through? Yep, looks like it did. Okay, so I store that in dev shm with the poor man's pen test just to kind of have a spot for it. And okay, linpies will just fire off. I'll let this run and I'll pause the video while this goes. Okay, looks like there are some results now we can review. An older pseudo version, which is kind of interesting. Maybe we could abuse that somehow, potentially. I'm scrolling through here kind of quickly because Linpeas does a really good job of like highlighting what could be a potential privilege escalation technique and nothing is sticking out extremely well. Oh, they're, they are running cron though. I can see that running as root. So maybe there'll be an interesting cron tab or like a peculiar thing where uh, they'll run that interesting Python script we found. I'm in the cron section here now, but I don't see anything new. It doesn't look like they actually run it. Odd. Oh, I wonder if our user can run like pseudo commands to invoke that as another user or something some host names and it said hosts file. Nothing, all that gimmicky. Another trip on the pseudoers directory so we could check that out. See if there's anything odd in there. No MySQL. Sorry, I'm scrolling through here kind of quick because nothing is standing out. Interesting files. Oh, set UIDs. Okay, cool. That's normally a good thing to take a look at. There might be quick, easy wins for privilege escalation. SGIT doesn't have anything odd or out of the out of place. Capabilities. That has more entries than it usually does. Normally, you just see MTR packet in here. Perl has the capability to set UID. Ooh. See, when you see that, that's usually a big thing. Because if you set the user ID, then you can effectively become a different user. So that might be used for privilege escalation. We should definitely check that out. There's our walrus and the carpenter. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of output. Sorry. Okay, okay, I don't see anything else extremely great. I wanna check out that curl, that Perl thing. Can I just run Perl? No, what, what? Why can I not run Perl? Let's tack L, slap that in. It's owned by root and it's in the Hatter group, which is weird, that's not normal, but Hatter can execute it, but no one else can. Okay. So it looks like Hatter is the kind of like the keys to the kingdom then. If we get into Hatter, we could probably just run Perl with the set UID trick and an insta win if we can set UID into root. That would be handy, uh, but we need to get into Hatter. Uh, Linpeas always trips up on that sudoers.d in the sudoers directory. Can I, can I CD in there, please? Not cat. LS, we have readme, which I can't read. We have Alice. And, oh, Alice can do something. She can run as rabbit. User bin Python 3.6, hum Alice while, oh, okay. So I would be able to find that just with sudo attack L, wouldn't I? Because I know Alice's password and I should probably write that down in like a readme or something. Yep, so she can run Python 3.6, home Alice walrus and the carpenter.py. Good, let's mess with that. So because this script 
If I go back to my home directory, this is a Python script that's running out of the context of our home directory. And because I can create other files in my home directory, and this Python script imports the random module, we could take advantage of one neat trick that Python will do when it's trying to import modules. Because Python searches for modules in like three different places. The very, very first thing it will do is it'll search for modules and libraries and packages in the current directory of the script that you're trying to run. That's the very first place it looks and that takes precedence over all the others. The other locations are like the system libraries and the Python package libraries, etc. So all we need to do is create a fake malicious random.py or random like a, a Python module that will have the same name. Python package. But since Python modules are really just Python scripts and they can be anything, because we can define this in our home directory, we could just slap in some other malicious code or like make a connection out back to us. So, or we could do that, or we could actually just do a little system, right? If I import OS, can I just do import, import OS system bin bash? And I guess I'll use tack p just to be safe, but I don't think that should matter because we're running this with, with sudo. Does that work for me? Let's try it. Uh, I'll run that sudo tack l, and I need to run as the rabbit user. So when I invoke walrus and the carpenter, it will run import random, and random.py will take effect, and that will just import OS, the real module, and start off bin bash. And I should be able to work with it and invoke it and work with that. Uh, let's try that. So I'll sudo tack u to run it as the rabbit. I'll slap that command in. And now I'm the rabbit user. Okay, where am I? I'm just in my home directory. No, I'm still in Alice. So let's go into home rabbit because I can do that now. And we have tea party. Ah, okay. What the heck is this? What is tea party? Um, it is lit up in red. So that kind of indicates to me that this might be a set UID binary, which is owned by root. Interesting. Was that will that just grant me root? I I would think so. Can I? What is the T party? It's a binary. Okay, set UID, set GID. Can I run T party? Welcome to the T party. The Mad Hatter will be here soon, probably by Thursday, which is the time of recording, August twentieth, in an hour from now. And please ask very nicely, and I'll give you some tea while you wait for him. Please. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, can I see what this is actually doing with like strings or something? I don't have strings. Great. Uh, let's download that file. Uh, I'm going to use some poor man's pen test again just so I can quickly spin up the little netcat thing to, to do that. That is that IP address and I want the T party file in the current directory. So please pull that down. Got it. Now I have tea party in my current directory. Okay, so let's check out the strings of tea party. I realize I'm working through Gwake here. I'm sorry, that's probably not the easiest to read. Uh, but welcome to tea party. Matt Hardy will be here soon. Regular echo command, and they're using the full path for echo, so I can't really abuse that. Probably be, but they are using date without a full path prefix. So I could abuse that. Tackle art. They just pass the arguments to get the, the next hour to date. Does that like behave different? Wait, is <laughs> segmentation fault core dumped is a string? That's hilarious. So is that normal? Like if I were to, let me, let me mark T party as executable and just run it. If I L trace that, it just prints it out on the screen waits for my input and then it puts segmentation fault. <laughs> That's not a real segmentation fault. That's awesome. All right, sweet. Uh, okay, anyway, we know a plan of attack right now, right? Date, it invokes date. Uh, could we actually modify the date command that's ran? Um, in path, is there any location that we control? Let me just try to make things. Nope, that doesn't work. Not that location. What about here? 
none of those work. All these are just going to end up being like system directory. So I don't think I can put anything in that. I might be able to just make our, our own directory. I mean, obviously I can, it's my home directory. But if I just specify like a prompt here, will that work? Or a new path variable in this location? Let me make a, a date file. I'll use nano. Everyone can hate me because I don't use Vim right now anyway, at least. Uh, and let's just run bash, right? Will that work? Again, I'll use tag P. And I, I think I do need to, to stick with that tag P because it, that one will be set UID. Let's try that. So if I chmod plus a that's plus X date, and if I run date, now I have a new bash session and exit will keep me. So I, I did invoke a second layer of bash there. Like if I take a look at shell level, the environment variable right now, then if I run date, take a look at shell level again to see what level of shells am I in. It looks like I, I'm, I've advanced. Okay, so now I need to add this into my path. So let me export that path variable to be this location and the original path as well. Because that way it will reach our malicious fake date command first, which will actually just give me access as that user before it reaches the real date command because that original string, when we saw it, isn't going to be using a prefix of an absolute location for that binary. So let's just dot slash tea party. And there we go. You can see right where it would have filled in the date command output. It actually just gave me Hatter at Wonderland and now I am that user. Okay, awesome. Ooh, ooh, and now that we're Hatter, remember Hatter was the one that could actually run Perl. So Perl, did that work? Oh, sorry. Which Perl? What's happening? Is, is that a command that I can run? Which Perl? Perl? I'm very confused. Oh, 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 oh. It's because my current UID is that, but I'm still not the real hatter right now. I don't have his gid. No, lame -o, lame -o, lame -o. Okay, let's uh, not use that date then because when I use TACP, it'll keep my set UID privileges, but it's not gonna keep my GID privileges for group ID. And that Perl command was the one that had the actual uh, group set to hatter. So let's 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 mess with that a little bit more. Go into our attack directory. Let's modify our date, and let me just slap in some pwncat syntax. There we go. Okay, regular reverse shell. Poor man's pen test chose that port, so we'll keep that listening and waiting. I will mark that as a black background so you can see it a little bit better run it and if I go back to dot slash tea party over here on the side, I'll make that real big dot slash. There we go. Now you can see pwn cat firing off. And I should be exactly hatter at that point. Cause that shell will run as him, not just with bash tag P. We'll see if that'll work. Fingers crossed. Bin bash, that's good. As much as I love Pwncat, I wish we were a little bit faster. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, still GID rabbit. Wait a second, wait a second. Do I, Hatter, CD Hatter. Oh, Hatter has a, what the heck is that? Cat password.txt. Why is Raven like a writing desk? Is that the password for Hatter? Yes, it is. Okay, so now I'm now I am the real hatter with the yes, with proper group ID, so I should be able to actually run Perl. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I ls hack l on that, and we know Perl is the binary that has set UID capabilities, let's uh switch my prompt back because I like I like that. I like the pwn cat prompt. Um Let's go ahead and do that Perl trick and technique. Uh, I think they, 
yeah, you can just search for Perl set UID capabilities and it's actually in GTF Opens. Like GTF Opens has an entry for that. Down at the very, very bottom, all of those are just setting up, okay, the set UID, but Perl tag E with this syntax will just give it to you. So let me copy that, slap it in, and there we go. Who am I? I'm root. So because that uh, ran with sh, it doesn't all that. It doesn't look all that good. And if I were to run it with bash, I would have to make sure to run tack p. There we go. So now I keep it as root. I don't think. Um, I don't think Pwncat will actually know to use capabilities yet. Oh, sorry. I need to get into slash root. And root has a user.txt and Alice is the one that has a, a, a root.txt. So cat home Alice root.txt. Little funky backwards Alice in Wonderland gimmick. So there you go. We've rooted the box. I don't think Pwncat actually knows to do uh, privileges, privileges or capabilities abuse. If I were to try and privesc tack e to get to root, uh, tech you root. Uh, it'll look for things, but all the GTF opens I think that we have in there doesn't cover capabilities yet. So that might be worthwhile to to tinker with uh, me personally, or any of you if you're interested in helping out with Pwncat and some of the automatic red team stuff, or automated uh, escalation and things. I could let that run and I'll see if there's anything that comes from it, but looks like it's finding all those set UID binaries. It thought it had a password foobar, but it does not. I'll, I'll move my face. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, let me actually dive into that because you guys might find it kind of interesting and we'll sprinkle in some extracurricular content. In the Pwncat directory, uh, in the data directory, Excuse me, it's under Pwncat's data. There is a gtfobins.json, which is a file that like I had created and poured a ton of time into as to how it will actually do privilege escalation if it finds a set UID or pseudo binary that it can abuse and really how it could abuse it between, okay, a write permission or a read permission or just simply getting a shell. We don't actually have functionality for capabilities in here though, but that would be really good to add just if anything, so we can run through this room and any other rooms that will do this. So that would be, that would be slick. I need to do that. Or maybe a call to action for you guys to come uh, help out with that project. Okay, that's it everybody. We made it to root. We solved all the problems. We submitted those tasks and we finished the Wonderland room. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you did like this video, and I hope you did, please do press that like button. Maybe leave a comment, maybe subscribe. You know, I'm super duper grateful. I know I've been going hard on Try Hack Me videos lately because I think they're fun to do and I enjoy them, uh, but I know I need to sprinkle in a little bit more extracurricular stuff. Maybe do some Rop Emporium. As some people are asking for Volm Hub, I obviously need to give some love to Hack the Box a lot more. There's just too much for me to do, but Thank you so much for sticking with me and supporting and being a part of this incredible community. So thank you, thank you. I love you. I'll see you in the next video, guys.